What is going on YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So that again, hit that notification bell because a lot of you guys message me on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Hey, did you post that video? I don't know. You got to hit that notification bell. Make sure you smash that like button. And one thing I'm going to really switch up real quick with this video is I always show you top five dividend stocks to buy or top 10 dividend stocks, monthly dividend stocks, best dividend stocks, blah, blah, blah. But I really want to show you, because a lot of you guys are asking me what I look for in stocks, okay? So I'm going to explain to you my thought process. I kind of go like a top five list. And, you know, I, I actually had to write it down, really explain to you guys, like, why I do this. And this is my thought process, because I'm evolving. I, I Everybody evolves, everybody adapts. I mean, I'm going to post a video tomorrow on a dividend stock that I sold on my M1 Finance dividend portfolio for another stock because it just didn't fit my criteria. And, you know, the other one was part of these, this number, uh, this step-by-step -step, uh, process that I follow and have a philosophy with. So make sure you smash that like button and you got to hit that notification bell. I, I'm telling you one last time. All right, let's check this out right now. So the first thing I always do is compare the stock against the S&P. I'm just using Pepsi as an example. So sometimes your goal, if you have a traditional Roth IRA, is to be in you know index funds or stuff to beat the S&P, have a nice return, uh, be a little aggressive like Vanguard VTI or VOO and compete against the S&P. If you have a traditional Roth IRA, you want to compete against the S&P. But as a dividend investor, you like stocks that really don't jump up too fast against the S&P and increase their dividends over time, as I always discuss their dividend history. So Pepsi right here in the past five years has not done hot against the S&P. Does that make it inferior against the S&P? No, because Pepsi is a damn good stock. So if you look since inception, I always do... Uh, you know, since inception, so max, I do five years. Now this is on Google Finance and I see the past year. So I like these, I always study all the trends to see how things are going. Now look at Pepsi. They're growing in price per share. They beat these guys since inception. This is a really good traditional Roth IRA material stock, increasing its price per share over time. It is also, which I'll go over their dividend uh, history, I like dividend stocks, uh, definitely dividend growth stocks. I like um, value investing. Some people go into growth investing. I mean, I, I have a combination of both. I, right now, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive. I like the high yield dividend stocks, 3 to 5% range. Uh, but this is a still a good one because on my M1 finance dividend portfolio, once I really start racking up dividends, again, my goal is to make Two thousand to four thousand dollars a month, my quarterly dividends, and one thousand to three thousand dollars a month of my monthly dividends. You know that's what I'm looking for, and of course I'm going to buy stocks like this once I have enough money in my M1 Finance dividend portfolio and start racking up the dividends. I mean, imagine putting in two thousand a month in Pepsi, and you're getting a really nice snowball effect because that's what you want with dividend investing. So the first thing I would say that's tip number one: compare the stock against the S&P. Now I'm going to show you when things don't go well against the S&P. So that's, this is a positive note. Now I'm going to show you a negative note. And this is what the, this uh, can be a yield trap sometimes and a big red flag. So check this out. So right here's an example. I always uh, provide Prospect Capital Corporation as a yield trap. I do believe it's a yield trap. And this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes. Only disclaimer in my description. But you see the decrease in price per share. Now, I'm going to show you how these guys do by themselves. They haven't done well against the S&P. Now, a P.E. ratio, I was going to discuss that too. If you have a high P.E. ratio, that means people are willing to pay the, the actual price and they expect high growth in the future. I'll go over one that has like a really high P.E. ratio. These guys have a low P.E. ratio. So with even mortgage-backed real estate investment trusts or REITs, they have a low P.E. ratio. People don't have a lot of confidence in them. I know people want to say FFO, but that should raise a red flag that it's 3.46. 3 That's pretty damn low. 
and a high dividend yield at 8.14%. Now, here's another thing that's a turnoff with these guys that um, can really get you as a yield trap. And right here, this is what I don't like about these guys either. So you look at how they're doing against the S&P. That's one thing. But they're also decreasing in price per share over time. 2006, they were $17.25. These guys right here, they're $8.85. So that's kind of a turnoff. And I'm going to go over dividend history next. And this is why these guys are a turnoff. And I'm going to show you a good dividend stock that has a good dividend history and a stock that has a bad dividend history. And we're going to start with a good one. Now, here's a perfect example. Here's Coca-Cola. It's sitting at $55.92, almost 93 uh, cents. And it has a dividend yield of 2.97%. It has a PE ratio of 27.41. Okay, maybe there's a little bit of confidence in there. An annual dividend of 168. But look at this dividends. I like to look at the past five years and, and past 10 years. And Coca-Cola is notorious for increasing their dividend each year. They have a reputation and, you know, they, people like them. Warren Buffett owns this stock for a reason. Look at this. 2013, 28 cents. 2014, 30, 33, 37, 39. That 42 cents. Now, again, this is not financial advice, but looking at the trends, looking at a company like Coca-Cola, which I'll discuss in one of my number sections as well, why I like these guys as a dividend stock, you're seeing a dividend increase. So I like dividend increases. I want a raise. Who wants a raise at work? You want a raise at work. I want a raise at work. I can tell you when that pandemic hit as a registered nurse, they stopped uh, contributions for 403B. That was pretty shitty what they did. And you know I picked up a lot of money and I threw it in my dividend portfolio, picking up a lot of shifts when the gym wasn't open. And um, I'm still trying to get to where I was uh, pre-pandemic with the gym and stuff. Because, I mean, it, all I did, I worked like 60 hours a week. And I threw it in my dividend portfolio because, you know, I don't believe a 403B is enough. So this is why I dividend invest because I'm treating it as a retirement pension. This is the nice thing. A retirement pension, you can stick with $400 a month. A dividend portfolio, you can get 400 425 or 50, 475, you can get increases over time. You're giving yourself a raise, and you're sitting on your ass doing nothing. That's the lazy way to do it, and I like that way, because you know what? I want my money to make money, okay? That's the nice thing. Now, I'm gonna show you something about dividend trends and dividend history, it's not attractive. Okay, right here, so here's an example of something that I don't like, okay? So, 2010 it was 10 cents so it went to 10 cents went to 11 all of a sudden it went to eight then it dropped to six and it has never improved so like i said with prospect capital in the beginning it was right around what 17 dollars that i was discussing with you guys and then look it went from 11 cents to six cents so you're not getting yourself a raise i like dividend increases and again, look at that P.E. ratio, not a lot of confidence. And the dividend yield's 8.09%. So when you see a dividend yield that's usually above 5%, it can be even like 4 or 5%. You need to study the dividend trends to make sure that you're not hitting a yield trap. These guys are a classic yield trap. Um, to you guys that bought the dip when Prospect Capital took a huge nosedive, kudos to you. I I hope that these guys improve in price and in, in you know, basically the increase or dividend over time because a lot of people got suckered into this and you're just getting six cents. I, I don't see any increases. That's not very attractive to me. I don't like that. I think that's crap. I, I want increases. I want my money to make money. I want the snowball effect to kick in. I want uh, compound interest. I want, I don't want to just be at a stagnant line, you know, just making $400 a month you know, and then it'll be like, you know, X amount of dollars because you're reinvesting. Why not get seven cents a month and eight cents a month and nine cents a month and 10 cents? Do you see where I'm going? I like the trends up. I like the increases. I don't like the decreases. It's just, it's, it's just not a good feeling. Like I said, in my one video with the yield trap, a girl approached me who lives in my complex, very attractive. I mean, definitely the hottest girl in the bar. 
attractive on the outside and the inside. It sucks the life out of you, sucks the financial income out of you. She has a terrible history. I mean, you know, you can't trust somebody like that. And that's just the same thing with a yield trap. You can't trust a yield, a yield trap that is going to improve. Actions speak louder than words. That's the thing. Where's their actions with prospect? It hasn't gone up. Just flat. You know, you want something that grows, you know, you want a, a fine wine and stuff. You don't, you don't just want something stagnant and decreases in value. That's a yield trap. That's nasty. Not good stuff. I'm going to jump to my third tip right now. And that's revenue. So revenue is very important when I look at dividend stocks. By the way, when I was going to say high PE ratio, Tesla is an example of a very high PE ratio where people are willing to pay that share price, which is like in the thousands, and they are expecting growth in the future. I mean, there's no guarantees, but that's that's a high P.E. ratio. That's a stock that has a very high P.E. ratio. I think it was like 360.5 or so. But let's discuss revenue real quick. So you're seeing 2015, 2016. This is in millions of U.S. dollars. So you're seeing a rebound, 2016, 62,000. 63,000, 64, 67, 70. You're seeing an increase in revenue. That's what I like. Again, Pepsi's a product that you know people have in the stores. They're in demand, and which I'll go over next. So you're seeing an increase in revenue, which makes these guys very attractive. So I always go to macrotrends.com, check the revenue on these companies and see how they're doing. So you're seeing an increase in revenue. And let's jump to one that really isn't doing too well. In prospect capital, I just did a, you know, I was just discussing these guys earlier. And look at these trends. 791, 657, 623, 631. They were at 791. This is in millions of US dollars. So I don't like the trends there. And again, they're a business development company. Business development companies are very risky. So um, the ones that I like are Main Street Capital. I just did a video on those guys. I'll post that in the... Um, tabs so just keep an eye on those tabs when you're watching this video so i like the trends of revenue okay i like the revenue going up so if it's not going up i'm a little iffy it's not on my radar which leads to the fourth statement with my or fourth key with my dividend investing strategies and dividend investing for you guys which i'll show you here's pepsi for example these guys are in demand. Look at how many people buy their products in stores. Not just Pepsi, not just Mountain Dew, but Lay's, Doritos, Lipton Iced Tea, Quaker Oats, Tropicana, Gatorade, uh, the Frappuccino, the Starbucks Frappuccino, Aquafina, Ruffles, Cheetos, Fritos, Tostitos, Sierra Mist, uh, walkers now this is just some of them and they also have lipton let's see if they have lipton there you go so this that's a lot of the products that they carry i mean quaker is huge look at how many people go in line and buy quaker oats or buy potato chips you know if big football games going on people buy potato chips or doritos or parties how many people are buying gatorade how many college kids do you think are buying gatorade when they're hung over on saturday so think about that in Powerade for um, you know Coca-Cola. Think about that, how much they're in demand. So that's one thing that you need to look into. What can they bring to consumers? What is important with consumers? So I just provide an example of all these snacks that these guys carry and why their products are in demand. It's just like when I did my video on Pfizer. Pfizer has blood pressure medications. It's going to be an epidemic and, and, and hypertensive uh, issues, hypertensive crisis. They're expecting 2030, all this money to be put in to hypertensive medications. That's an example too. You know, they have, um, unfortunately there's a rise in mental health. So a lot of the anti-anxiety and certain type of medications are used for those people. And I, I do hope those people do get better. It's, it's mental health is, it's very damaging. It's, it, it's, it's very sad to see people, you know, go down that path. But those are in demand for people. So I'm going to show you one last tip that I provide for investors and what I like about certain dividend stocks. And especially a stock like Apple 
what makes Apple an amazing stock? They increase their dividend. They've done well against the S&P. The revenue is phenomenal, okay? They are in demand. What do I have right here? An iPhone, okay? That's just an example. I got like a million of you guys messaging me and sending me uh, Twitters, you know, thanks for the shout out and Dividend Warrior Wednesday. And here's the thing. If you have a traditional or Roth IRA, you like to see stocks split because Apple, you know, I sure as hell wouldn't pay for something that's uh, $400 a share. I don't have the money for that. And you know what? It split. Look at this. 87, two for one, 2000, two for one, two for uh, 2005, two for one, 2014, seven for one, 2024 for one. These guys are splitting their stock all the time. And I can almost guarantee, again, not financial advice, that Apple's probably going to be back in the 400s eventually. So this, you're seeing the trends with this stock and with it splitting its stock, you know, it's dividends, which I'll show you their dividend history real quick as an example. This is right before it split. So look, 82 cents, 20 cents, 22. So if you had, you know, four for one split and you had all those shares and you have an amazing amount of shares now, look at the trends. There's a split right there. 47, 52, 57, 63, 73. You're seeing consistent splits and it, consistent dividend increases. That's what makes these guys an amazing stock. Now, the yield isn't very attractive. That's one thing about Apple that has me a little iffy, but if, I had, if you gave me $10,000 and said, would you throw it in Apple right now? Uh, yeah, I would. So that's another thing. Um, it's an amazing stock, amazing traditional Roth IRA stock. So um, that's pretty much what I have to to tell you guys and, and give you this lecture on. So let me know if you have any questions. Do you like my examples, my top five? Is it, you know, how does the stock do against the S&P? It's dividend history. Is it increasing or de decreasing? It's revenue. It's the PE ratio, high PE ratio versus low. Is it in demand? Does it have a stock split history? Those are my five basic tips for you guys. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. This is Dark Dividend. You guys have a good one.